Hello and welcome to Advanced Numbering with ID8 Apps for Revit. My name is Glynis Patterson of ID8 Software. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the unique challenges related to the numbering of curtain panels within Revit. ID8 Apps is a collection of Revit add-on applications that are designed for the everyday Revit user. ID8 Renumber is a powerful application that's part of ID8 Apps. Renumber plays an important role in model management for our virtual design and construction customers by providing a way to efficiently document building elements, such as curtain panels, with logical numbering schemas, bringing clarity to construction and fabrication. Since the release of ID8 Renumber, we've had our customers present us with an increasingly sophisticated set of challenges related to the numbering of building elements. Curtain panels, for example, need to be numbered in a way that reflects their relative location, and yet they don't belong to a room or a space. With ID8 Renumber, you can easily merge a variety of data sources to reflect the building, wall, or even point coordinate data for each panel. The more refined your number, the smoother the fabrication process will go. In our test file, we'll take a look at numbering curtain panels that are situated along several different floors and are also along a, a wall that is not straight. It's a curved wall or a segmented wall. Um, what we've already done to prep the file is in the elevation view, we have done a tag of all curtain panels. So you can see lots of the tags. And uh, you can also see as we zoom in closer that there's actually a mixture of uh, both sort of spandrel panels and clear glass panels. So the darker pieces above, for example, are those spandrel panels. Um, and our goal in this example is to actually only label the clear glass ones. Um, we're going to leave the spandrels uh, and eventually at the end delete those tags that are associated with the, the spandrels. So we've done our prep work to lay out the tags, and we've also uh, created a line. There's a red line here that's just a detail line um, to help us with our initial renumbering process. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is to import a curtain panel ruler. You could create your own, but if you want to, uh, you can find by using the import button here that you can browse to our bonus folder. Uh, this is where sort of less conventional rules are stored, uh, and you can use this one as a starting point. And um, in this particular rule, the way we've set it up is that there's a field for orientation. Um, the idea being you could sort of add a prefix for north, south, east, west as an example, uh, but you could use sort of any extra properties there. Uh, or, or different prefixes. So we're going to begin by just using the sort of out-of-the-box rule and use the path method. We're just going to pick the, um, the detail line there. And the very first time you do it, um, we do need to actually borrow all of those panels. So right at this moment in time, this is actually a C4R project. We do test quite a bit on C4R. So we're going out and we're borrowing all those panels. Um, if you already borrowed them because you just created it, um, that process would have gone quicker. Um, so it does take a little bit of time the first time you do it. Um, so now we can see uh, all of the panels that are intersected with that line have a W and then a dash and then a 0, 0. Uh, and the numbers sequentially, as we can see here. So we get to the end, and let's see, that last one, oh yeah, the wall is kind of curving away from us, so the last one is actually beyond the, um, the crop box, which is why you don't see the edge there. Um, so that's great for our starting point, but of course our goal is to number, uh, in this case there's three different floors. So uh, one of the next things we might want to do is extend, uh, sort of repeat the process, but extend our detail line. Um, so one of the things we can do is just take our, our detail line and use the create similar to extend the path. So again, this is just a regular um, detail line. And what we can do is, in this case, uh, we can draw the continuation of the path through items that are not curtain panels. You might not always have that luxury, um, but in this case we do. So if our goal was to number from, from left to right, we can just um, pass through an area that doesn't have curtain panels to avoid any kind of confusion, and then we'll come back and do the same thing for the floor below. So 
Um, these lines that you can use, a lot of our customers, what they're doing is they're hiding the line later so you can reuse it at another point in the project. Um, you can you can always just turn on the reveal hidden elements and do your renumber at another point in time if you need to. So now that we have our line completed or extended, I should say, we're going to go ahead and repeat the process. So we'll go and launch renumber. Uh, leave the rule the same and just pick the line again. And what Renumber will do is find any contiguous series of, of detail lines. And then, of course, if you pick it and you don't like the order that it's in, there's, you'll see an opportunity to kind of reverse it. Now, one of the things you'll notice as we look at this expanded list, the, the items in green here are the ones that are being modified. They previously didn't have any numbers. Um, but you'll also notice um, that the spandrels, as we talked about earlier, we wanted to ignore them. So we, we could individually select them to be ignored, uh, but we want to be smarter than that. You know, our goal is to prevent them from being included at all. So we have here, it goes from 23 to 25, and that's because the one in the middle there, um, that actually has been given a 24. Even though there's no tag there, it does have that number. So what we want to do is we want to find a way to exclude the spandrel types from being included in the count. And we can do that. The way we're going to do that, though, is through a yes, no parameter. Um, I've already created one here called ignore type. And you can see it's yes, no, and you can see that it's applied to curtain panels. And, and I've also uh, quite frequently used the same kind of idea for walls. Um, and so we have that as a parameter available to us on the type for curtain panels. And then what we need to do is make sure that the types themselves are assigned to that property if we want them to be excluded. So here we see the ignore type on the spandrel is already set. And then the last part is that we'll need to make sure that the rule is modified to take advantage of that property setting. So let's launch renumber again. And this time we're going to go into our manage rules area and take a look at the curtain panel rule. Uh, up top you see there is an ignore parameter. Um, and any, any parameter that's set to yes will be ignored. Uh, you can also use the built-in parameter called is nested to ignore nested families. Um, so once we've made a modification to the rule, we can again go and just pick the, the line again. And we'll see that the previously it went from 23 to 25, or yeah, and now it's skipping number 24. And so all the ones after that have to be modified. And you can see there now that one's 24. So we're good to go on the numbering of all these. And um, that's, that's a great starting point. Uh, but let's say we want to be a little more sophisticated than this. One of the more useful things we can do with elements such as curtain panels is give them information about their context. Where in the building are they intended to be? So that when we bring them onto site or fabricating them, um, elsewhere that we have some kind of indication of their relationship to each other and to the walls that will be built. So in this example, one of what we're doing here is we're going to add the name of the level to which the curtain panel wall is hosted. Uh, so this will help us give some additional context. And then we're going to just modify um, this constant value, which is called orientation, we're just going to add a little dash in front of it um, to help change sort of the, the way the number is going to display. And so with our mod modified rule here, we can also, let's just change it to south so we can see more profoundly the difference. And we're going to use our crossing method again. And now you can see we've got, you know, level five prefix and level four and level three. And we are filling out this tag, but you could also use this as a way of filling out just schedule-based data. It doesn't have to be the tag data, the mark value itself. Um, and this is pretty good, uh, but we, we're noticing now that we have that, the level number is changing, but I think what would be nicer is if the beginning number for each level was a 0, 0, 1. Um, and we can also do that uh, through the rule itself. So within the curtain panel rule, we do have a, a part that is the increment value. So we can go ahead and edit that. 
And what we can do is for certain fields, level being one of them, we can use that as a way of resetting the clock for the numbering systems. So this means, you know, when it gets to the fourth level, it will restart at 001, and you can see that here. So now that we've completed our numbering, I'd like to wrap up this process by just doing a little bit of cleanup work. I'm going to, here I'm going to use another tool developed by ID at Software called Explore. And my goal here is simply to select tags that aren't filled in and delete those. So I'm, I'm picking all the curtain panel tags that are visible in the view. And then I'm going to look at the, the mark value. And this will let me find all the ones that are blank and select only those. So I can end on a really good note. And after we take a look at this, let's review some of the tips for working with curtain panels. Our first tip is to prepare the view depth of your elevation to be as shallow as possible. If you were paying close attention at the beginning of this video, you may have noticed that I missed a few panels because my depth was not correct. It's important to set the far clip offset such that it goes just to the back of the front panel and no deeper. Otherwise, you may include other panels that are in the background. The next tip is to take advantage of the ignore parameter functionality. This can be used to ignore families that are nested, for example, or as in our video, exclude certain families from being included. The next tip is to become familiar with the vertex path method. Uh, it's different from the crossing method in that it will only number exactly where the vertex is as opposed to anywhere the line crosses through. So it gives you a greater deal of control for complicated layouts as, such as the one shown here. And for our last tip, definitely consider looking into customizing your rules. For curtain panels in particular, properties that might be useful would be the host wall mark, project info properties, or some of the host wall properties such as base level. I eat Renumber can be used to number any element or sheet-based view. Having a logical numbering schema for your building elements is a great way to effectively communicate with your team during both design and construction. Reduce the time to completion on your next job with Renumber. We hope you've enjoyed this closer look at advanced numbering with ID8 apps. If you have a numbering challenge you'd like us to review, just drop us a line. You can learn more about ID8 apps and Renumber online at id8software.com.